right, and just like that, the second half of basketball is getting underway tomorrow. Got a great double header with the Bucks and Celtics, oh yes, we need that matchup. And then the Rockets and Lakers, which is very interesting considering the Lakers situation and trying to get back into the playoffs. And that'll be part of what we're looking at today, cause the topic of this video is going to be talking about a little bit of the story from the first half of the season, but really what to expect and what we're going into with the second half, because I'm not trying to rush time, I'm not trying to rush months of my life away, but I am really excited because this second half of the season is going to have a lot to do with what ends up happening in free agency maybe in some cases it won't influence it as much but i think there are specific cases where it's like if this happens in the playoffs then this will probably happen in free agency so 2019 is a very exciting year for the nba there's a lot of potential here speaking of potential that really starts with the matchup tomorrow with the bucks and celtics and that's part of a couple of storylines going into the eastern conference playoffs going into who's going to make the nba finals and there's a couple of things here so First of all, there's Giannis. We have no reason to expect that he's not going to be as consistent as he's been in the first half of the season. We have no real reasons to expect a drop off. Of course, things happen and we can't predict them, but if it goes where it's been trending, then the Bucks will finish either the second or first best team in the Eastern Conference and in the NBA. And in my opinion, that will make it very difficult for anyone to beat Giannis in the MVP race. I think from where we sit right now, the most realistic MVP candidates, I'm not talking about the entire race, I'm talking about the players that can actually win it, you're basically looking at Giannis, Harden, and Paul George. And if you look at how MVP is historically voted on a majority of the time, it would be really hard to take Giannis out of that spot. Because if we follow the trend, let's say he finishes the season playing the amazing basketball and posting the amazing numbers that he's been posting, and then the Bucks still have the best record in the NBA, regardless of the streak that Paul George has been on in like the last month or two, and regardless of Harden's 30 point streak, regardless of whatever arguments you can come up with, I just think it's going to be really hard to take it away from Giannis looking at how historically things are done. And that's part of a bigger thing I'm looking at with Giannis because for a while now he's just been that kid that we know has a ton of potential but the team never really goes anywhere. And now we're all of a sudden in this position where he can win the MVP and really, really, really has a good chance to make the NBA Finals. So that right there takes him from just, oh, this really, this, you know, this freak of nature. That's where you start talking about him in terms of legacy. He's really starting to become one of those players and he's still very young. So that's very fascinating, especially with the Eastern Conference looking for a new king to crown without LeBron James. Of course, it's been more wide open. And the Eastern Conference being wide open, of course, has been a story from the first half of the season. Now, by this point, the top two Eastern teams have really kind of separated themselves from the other two. And of course, I'm referring to the Raptors, Bucks, Celtics, and Sixers. Indiana, no disrespect to them because they have been holding on without Victor Oladipo. But I think we all know once we get to the playoffs, nobody expects that team to really be able to take any of these four without their star player. Playoff basketball is just totally different. And that's where I was going with this anyways. Right now, both Boston and Philly, they are actually tied in record, but Boston owns a tiebreaker, so they are in the fourth seed. And they're both six and a half games out of first. That means they're five and a half behind Toronto, and unless something really, really changes, something drastic happens, probably neither one of those teams are going to be able to catch or overtake Milwaukee or Toronto. But in my time watching the NBA, I have seen some shit. So I'll just say going into the Eastern Conference playoffs and whatever happens with the second half of this season, don't let that fool you into thinking that this is still not as wide open as ever. Because I always point back and say the 2010 Celtics, they finished that season as a 500 team. I'm talking about the second half of that season. I think they split the games right down the middle or something like that. Or the last 41 games, they split it right down the middle. So they were, they were 500 to finish that year. And the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers were as regular season teams doing way better Better than them they were way more successful the mood was better and then we got to the playoffs and everything changed so i'm not talking about just in terms of the boston celtics this year but also philly these eastern conference teams are very talented they all have the pieces to put together a finals run so regardless of what the records say there should be no surprises when we get in and things don't look how you expect and speaking of expectations there's been like no expectations of what Kawhi leonard is going to do this season it's crazy how certain players completely avoid free agent questions whereas others it seems to just follow them around which i'm gonna get to a little bit later actually kind of soon the hornets are coming up but yeah like i was saying how this second half of the season is really going to influence what happens this summer nobody knows what Kawhi leonard is thinking but if you're a raptors fan you're really really hoping you guys make the finals this year because you're very well you're still in it you're only two losses behind the milwaukee bucks in the loss column have as good a chance of anybody of making the nba finals and yeah if, if you're a fan of that team you're looking at that and saying that's our best chance to keep Kawhi because 
because if we make the finals then where else would he want to go that's going to give him a better chance to compete like you notice this season you never hear any Kawhi Leonard Lakers talks because we know Kawhi Leonard is not a guy who cares about spotlights and all these extra things that come with LA and then you're wondering why would he go there anyways when Toronto is a better team why would he go there to play with LeBron James who will be gone well you don't know when he's going to be gone but the point is this is not prime LeBron not Miami LeBron this is chill LeBron this is if we make the playoffs we do if we make the playoffs we don't just why would you leave Toronto for that but again you never know with these players so you are really really hoping for a finals run this year if you're Toronto but how about a story from the first half of the season that has really caught zero kind of attention it has has no kind of coverage on it and it's the Charlotte Hornets. Kimball Walker is a free agent after this season and the reason the story hasn't it hasn't gained any traction no one's asking about it is because every time that he's been asked about it all his comments point to him wanting to stay with the Charlotte Hornets. He's saying that he thinks they'll be able to figure it out. He sees himself there long term. Now, of course, there is zero reason to trust that because, well, he hasn't signed an extension. And although that's probably just to leave the Hornets flexibility this summer if he does decide to do so, we know that players have said, yes, I want to be here. I want to do this and do that. And then they still end up leaving. So we'll see what he actually feels like after a first round out this year. But the thoughts that I was having with Kimba is, well, first of all, it's not really a good measuring stick in the Eastern Conference because although they are seven place currently 27 and 30 again the bottom half of the east is very very weak like you really have a chance of a team getting in with with win totals in the 30s that's a real thing that could happen so regardless of the situation i mean he's happy to be in the playoffs he'll be happy to be there if they hold on to that spot they very well could lose it that's actually a thing they're only a half a game inside the playoffs so i'm especially i'm especially interested to see what happens if they don't make it but the thing with Kimba is I don't really see him, at least right now, as one of those legacy type players. You know, he just kind of flies under the radar and he might see it that way himself. So maybe he loves Charlotte and maybe he doesn't feel the need to actually ring chase because he's not a player that anybody judges hard. Like we know Kimba Walker exists. He plays for the Charlotte Hornets. He, he, who, he balls out, but nobody is like pushing him to go win a championship or saying Kimba needs to do this for his career. Nobody's pushing it that hard like they are for a player like Westbrook or some of these other stars in the league. So maybe he feels that. He feels, you know, he doesn't need that pressure. He doesn't have to go win an NBA championship. We just heard Damian Lillard saying yesterday that there are things that are more important to him than winning a championship, and that's why he never wants to leave Portland. So bottom line is Kimba's free agency is not a story. It might not become a story. And although he does make up a very stacked free agent class this summer, maybe there's really nothing coming out of that. So speaking of free agency, that brings us over to the Western Conference. And of course, after all the, I'm putting up air quotes right now, <laughs> all the struggle and turbulence that the Golden State Warriors have experienced in the first half of the season, air quotes, they are 41 and 16. They are sitting comfortably atop the Western Conference, pretty much where everybody thought they would be. And it's so interesting because I'm still seeing people talk about them on Twitter and I'm seeing these articles talking about the inevitable breakup of the Golden State Warriors. And while I'm wishing as hard as the next person that that actually does come true, I've also read from Warriors management that they're not going to let money be the reason that they break up this summer. They've said that they will pay whatever they have to pay to keep these players happy, to keep this core happy. Every time you see a player talking about being a free agent in a few years, they're in the mix. I've seen them talking about Giannis possibly in 2021, talking about Anthony Davis next summer. So the Warriors have gotten a taste of royalty and they want it for as long as they can hold on to it. That being said, their free agents this summer will be Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant, and DeMarcus Cousins, potentially of course, because I believe KD has an option on that. So those are their potential free agents this summer. And when I said at the beginning of the video, the second half of the season and the playoffs, that would be what dictates or influences what happens in the off season. That especially applies to the Warriors for me because although obviously we expect them, I expect them to win the championship. That is a hill I will die on. I'm just going to say if they stay healthy and nothing out of the ordinary happens, there's no way that they lose the NBA finals, regardless of who comes out of the East. I'll die on that hill. I'd love to see it turn out differently but that's what i believe but if they did somehow get to the finals and lose for whatever reason i think that would especially influence kevin durant to leave but of course we cannot count on that um the expectations for the warriors in the second half should be no different than they've been for the last few years and the thing that's so fascinating about the western conference or the golden state warriors is that the teams that could beat them to me they all play in the east most of the teams anyways like if i'm looking at the western conference and i'm saying what team do i think could possibly upset the warriors well first of all i don't think any team really has that chance but if i had to pick put a gun in my head i have to pick then i would pick the thunder i like what they've done with the roster this year 
Paul George playing at an elite level, I like their defense. So if I just have to pick, sure, I'll pick them. But after that, I mean, Houston's not even as good as they were last year, and they're trying to assimilate Chris Paul back in, trying to get him to the level that he was at. And then, who else in the West would stand a chance? I am really not trying to watch the Warriors and Nuggets. The Nuggets do not have that one guy. Like, you know in the playoffs how you have that one guy who can just go out and win games for you? The Nuggets are more of a team effort. That is not going to take down Golden State. You gotta have that takeover guy. Portland obviously cannot be Golden State in the series. Like, nobody in the West. Nobody else in the West really has a chance. Speaking of what's going on in the west the los angeles lakers that's going to be a very interesting second half case study they are currently three games out of the playoffs and the clippers hold that a seed not impossible to make up but three games is more than it sounds especially when you get to where we are with like what 20 something games left now of course they do have it on their side that the clippers traded tobias harris so maybe they will fall out of that spot and the chances there to leapfrog these teams but what's more interesting is does it even matter if the lakers make the playoffs at all this season because that's one of the things that I think works against what I said at the beginning where the second half really influences free agency. Look, any free agent that's looking at the Lakers uh, for free agency this summer, they know what they're getting themselves into. They know that they're going to pair with LeBron. So, and if they've been paying attention, they saw that the Lakers were what, a top four team before the injuries completely derailed their season. Like that knocked them all the way back. So you consider that and you consider that even if the Lakers do make the playoffs, it's not like you should really be expecting them to go all that far or go to the NBA Finals or anything. So any free agent looking at them kind of already knows what they're getting into, whether they make it or not. But with the Lakers, what excites me more is looking into the summertime, looking into free agency. Because regardless of what happens going into this second half, who do they actually get this summer? I know the expectation has been that, oh, you know, the Lakers are back on the map, they got LeBron James, they're gonna get somebody this summer. That's what we've been thinking, right? And especially because this is a stacked free agent class. But look at reality for a second. Who are they going to get? We've already talked about Kimball Walker, who all all signs point to him resigning in Charlotte. That's where they point. He hasn't given any indication that he really wants to leave yet. So, you know, we'll see. But right now, it's pointed toward Charlotte. If you look at the Golden State ban, look, we all think that Klay Thompson would fit perfectly with the Lakers, a catch and shoot player next to LeBron, and he plays defense. Yeah, that's beautiful and all. But Klay Thompson and Steph Curry, they're really close. Klay Thompson is also going to get whatever amount of money that he wants from the Warriors. They've already said they are not going to let money break up this team. And his role is perfect there. He's going to keep getting open shots shots for as long as Golden State can supply talent around him. So why would he leave? Like what would be the purpose of him leaving Golden State? I don't know. Clay's a really quiet guy, doesn't show much emotion. Maybe he just wants to go play basketball somewhere else, but there's nothing that points to that. And there's nothing about his situation that points to that move making sense. So that's Kimba and Clay. I once made a video because I, I do expect my, my thoughts are that Kevin Durant is going to leave this summer. And I did say LA at first, but after, you know, my, after thinking way more about that, I really, I don't think that makes any sense. Because if Kevin Durant were to leave Golden State, again, basketball wise, it doesn't make sense for him to leave. It's more about him knowing that people don't respect his championships and what he's accomplished. So that really wouldn't make sense for him to then go play with LeBron James and the Lakers because then people are just going to say the same thing. Now you when you went from the Warriors to go play with LeBron, I don't think that would accomplish the goal that he would be trying to accomplish by leaving Golden State. So that's another one. Kawhi Leonard, I've already went over that earlier in the video. He's in Toronto with a very real possibility at a finals run. What would be his purpose of leaving the Toronto Raptors for LA, especially when he doesn't care about any of that market stuff? Or Then I'm wondering about what his play style next to LeBron would be. Why would he do that? The Sixers traded for Jimmy Butler with the understanding that they were going to be able to resign him. But if he did leave, the last thing I ever heard about Jimmy Butler leaving a team was him and Kyrie teaming up in New York. I can't remember which of them said they would love to play with the other, but that was the last thing I heard there. If he did leave Philly. So you see, I, I've, I've went through most of this class already, most of the top talent in this class. I think that kind of leaves you with a guy like DeMarcus Cousins, who that's not a bad catch. But we know DeMarcus wants a bag this summer. We know that it's not likely that he stays in Golden State. Unless Kevin Durant leaves, then would they be able to pay him? I heard early on before he had even returned that he was thinking of maybe just staying. He liked what the Warriors are doing. And if money opens up, then why would he leave Steph Curry and Klay Thompson when he could just get paid there? But if Kevin Durant does stay with the Warriors, then obviously that pushes Cousins out. And then, yeah, I think Cousins is a perfect catch for LA. LA could pay him. He's going to play with LeBron. He's, he's in a big market. He's in a place where he hopes they'll give him more talent going forward. 
I think Cousins would be probably out of everything I've just talked about, maybe the most realistic catch. So anyways, how that relates to the second half of the season, I don't know that they make themselves more attractive just because they go to the playoffs this year and lose in like the first or second round. Again, you're going to play with LeBron James. That's the big draw there. For any big free agent that's going to play there right now, it's because of LeBron. It's not because of the core. So I think one way or the other, they just kind of are what they are to free agents. And yeah, as far as the biggest things in the second half of the season, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Of course, we have the Pelicans who I'm going to put a prediction out. I don't think Anthony Davis is going to play another game there. We've already seen what a fucking fiasco it was for this, uh, th these, you know, this little week after the trade deadline, having him play there and not play fourth quarters and then leave the arena. GM just got fired. Like, why are y'all doing this? The Pelicans, $2 million cannot be that much to y'all. That's that's pretty much what the fine would come out to if they paid 100000 every game to sit him. Just take the L. Take the fine and sit him. It's unfair, but it'll be even more unfair if he tears anything and then all of a sudden his value's way down and you can't trade for him this summer. Or you can't get great value for him this summer because we already know the value that you get for a player like ad is already likely not going to be equal so why even risk it ad does not need to play another game for the pelicans in the second half of the season and that's a storyline i am really excited for this summer because the pelicans waited to trade him they waited so that means they really want to see everybody put their best hand out and that includes the boston celtics who for some reason people decided to laugh at every time anthony davis's name came up i don't know why people thought it was funny this is danny Ainge we're talking about he has trading assets he will gamble i don't know why people just thought that was a joke like he couldn't end up there and then so they'll be looking to deal with boston and of course whoever you know has the first pick that'll play a big part into this anthony davis trade also i i really think that's kind of like the common sense thing that'll happen there or what we should expect ultimately the second half of the season leads up to the most exciting free agent class that i've been around for since 2011 well technically that was the summer of 2010 but yeah i have not lived for a class that stacked since then and that's where we're headed. I'm very excited because it has the potential to totally reshape the NBA. Specifically, all the power is in Golden State's and really specifically Kevin Durant's hand. If he leaves the Warriors, all of a sudden everything is wide open again because regardless of where he goes, there will never be another conglomerate of talent like the Warriors, not in the short term anyways. He could go to the Knicks and make another big three, but that still won't be what you have with him and Curry and Klay Thompson. So he holds a lot of that power. There's a lot of power that could shift. The draft class looks good. Man, I am really excited for basketball in 2019. Like just overall, the end of this season, the free agent class, the start of next season. Not trying to rush my life away, but things could get very, very interesting. So let me know in the comments what you think about the second half of the season or the first half. What you think about this upcoming free agency class. Hit the like button, comment, and sub if you enjoyed. And hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications on future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.